Okay, so this is the Canon 5D Classic or the 5D Mark I. And I'm just gonna take you through the menu system on here and show you the settings that I've used. I've tried lots of different settings with this. Um, there isn't a great deal of stuff to set, but uh, I'll take you through what there is. So the first thing to note with the menu system is that it is just a, a single page. I mean, you kind of have color tabs of, you see on the right hand side, there's an orange and then there's the blue section and red, but it, essentially it's just one page and it's quite simple. So I'll take you through the main points of this so you can see what some of the settings are and what things I set them to. So the first point here is that I just set this to just raw and I only shoot raw uh, on this camera really. So I've set it to raw. Uh, the beep I switch off is just the autofocus confirmation and shoot without card I switched that to off as well. That means if there's no card in the side it won't take a photo so you're not going to start shooting without one. This one here is just your bracketing. Once you click into it, you can set it to take uh, three shots up to two stops apart if you want to do bracketing, which is really good for sort of architecture or landscape photos. But you can always just set that manually as well, just using the, using the camera manually, manually. But it works really well, so it's a nice little setting to have. White balance shift, I leave that alone and custom white balance, so I don't touch this. Color space doesn't really matter if you're shooting raw, it only affects JPEG. Now in the picture style, I use standard, but I do something different here. So to go into the settings, you have to press this jump button, which is kind of, <laughs> yeah, sort of probably lost in translation jump when you're coming in the menu. But I use standard and then I set the sharpness to the maximum. So it's important to understand that when you set these settings here, they're only gonna affect the JPEG preview on the screen at the back. They're not going to affect the raw file that you record. But the reason I changed them is because what you see when you take a photo on the back of the screen is just the JPEG preview. Even though we're only set to shoot raw, there is a tiny little JPEG file which goes onto that, which is, what is made for the uh, screen on the back of the camera. So when we see the picture on the back of the camera, because this screen on the back on the 5D Mark I is quite low quality, uh, and it's hard to see whether the picture's sharp or not. I've moved the sharpness all the way up to seven, and I've just dropped the contrast a little bit by one uh, mark, so it's at minus uh, one. So again, that's just so I can see a better sharper preview on the back screen here, and it doesn't have any effects on the raw file. So I'll come back out to, and I don't change it, I only use that. Review time, sorry. So when the picture comes up, why have you taken a photo on the back screen? It's set to two seconds for me, and I set it to not display the autofocus point. What that means is that the autofocus point's um, not gonna show up as a little red dot on the preview on the back of the camera. The histogram that I look at is just the bright one. You can set it to RGB where you get the individual RGB color channels, or just bright. Bright is enough, uh, it's definitely enough. And if you learn to read your histograms, I mean, you can set it to whichever one you want, but I always just use bright. Auto power off, I set to one minute, you can set it to whatever you want. And auto rotate is on, so when you shoot the camera in portrait orientation, it will automatically rotate the files on the memory card for you, so you don't have to do it afterwards, which is a good thing to have. I leave the LCD brightness as standard, set the date and time. File number is continuous, so when you go on to the next shoot, the numbers keep counting upwards. You don't get file uh, clash, file number, file, file naming clashes, I should say, like that, and it's easier to work with. So I just set it to continuous. Language, English, video system, don't have to worry about that. That's the format function here, and then we have some of the custom functions, so I'll take you through some of these. Now, the first one here is, well, let me just explain what this is. This is a bunch of more um, customized settings, if you like. Uh, they're in, it, in the end, they're really quite basic by modern standards, but they are worth looking at. And you can just cycle through these. It's like a little sub menu, essentially. So the first one here is this button on the back. You see where my thumb is here? This center button of the wheel is called the set button. And when I'm shooting normally, I can set this to do a few things. I can set it to do nothing. <laughs> I change the image quality, which is, I wouldn't want that. Change the picture style, I don't want that. View the menu, you might want that, but I don't think so. And just image replay. Now the normal image replay button is down here. If I want to look at pictures and cycle through them quickly, I could just use my thumb. And that's really useful if you're using a larger lens, which you want to hold with your left hand, that then you can quickly press this 
to look at the picture without having to lower the camera down, use your left hand to hit the playback button. So essentially it just takes this play button here and makes this button do the same thing so you can use it with your right hand. Again, that might not seem like a big deal, but actually if you're using a larger lens, it's really useful because you don't have to drop the camera down so much and use your left hand to do it. You can keep your left hand on the lens and you can use your right hand to activate the button here. Um, and then if what I really like on Canon and the re reason I really like this wheel is that when you want to look through your pictures, you can just use the jog wheel here and you can scan as across as many as you want. And I, I think that's great. It's a really nice feature on Canon. So I use this set. I have the uh, set button here set to image replay. Long exposure noise reduction is for when you have a a uh, photo where you have a long or slow shutter speed. So if you're doing a one minute exposure, it will do some noise reduction. I don't set that on to, uh, to on, um, it's a waste of time. Sync speed, just leave it, I just leave that alone, leave it to auto. I don't bother with any of these. Uh, exposure level increments, it's just how much of um, a change the wheels make when you turn them, whether you want full stops or I don't know what the settings are, half stop or third stop. So I just leave it on third because it gives me the most accuracy. Flash fires, you can just leave that in there. ISO expansion, I have that to off. Um, what it means is that the, the, the sort of native limit on the camera is ISO 1600. It can go, when you enable this, up to 3200. But from what I understand, 3200 is just a pushed 1600. Um, whether you can do exactly the same thing in processing or not. I'm not sure if it would look exactly the same, but it probably look really similar. So there's probably not that much point, but you could switch that on if you want to, or have a play around with it and uh, and try it. The bracketing sequence, just leave that as the standard. This is when you do the bracketed shots, it's the order that it takes it in, it doesn't really matter that much. Superimposed display, just leave that as on. Menu button display position, and just leave that as previous. Mirror lockup disabled. You can use this now. The mirror lockup it could be useful uh, because the the five D Mark One has a really heavy mirror, which can introduce some shake. Bubble bubble. <laughs> AF point selection. You can either use the if you if you leave this on normal, the joystick won't work. You'll have to do the uh, button on the back to select the focus points and then cycle through them with a the wheel. Or if you want to use the joystick, you can switch this to multi uh, controller direct, which is just the joystick. So you can switch the joystick on like that. Um, the This is for the flash, I leave it on evaluative. It means it just bounces the whole scene. First person sync for the shutter. Unless you know what you're doing, you can switch that to, um, you can have you can switch that to second person if you want to. I just leave it on first person as standard. Now the safety shift in AV or TV, this is quite useful. So I'm going to enable this because what this means is that if you use aperture priority, if you have let's say you're at f 2.8 and that's the fastest your lens goes, you're getting regular aperture priority. But if the exposure is going to blow because the scene's too bright, it will then force the aperture down. So what it's saying is that it will protect the exposure at the sake of forcing your aperture to change. So you remember when you're in aperture priority, normally the camera is locking the aperture and it will change the shutter speed. But if it's not possible, and we don't have auto ISO on this camera, so let's say you accidentally left your ISO a bit too high and the aperture priority runs out of shutter speed in order to adjust your exposure exposure automatically for you, even though your exposure is normally locked by your aperture priority, it will in it will force it to uh, change the aperture on your camera in order to protect the exposure. So it's like a safety shift. So it gives you regular aperture priority unless your exposure is going to really blow, and then it will change it for you automatically. Have a play with it. It's a nice little feature. It's something I really like that Canon does. Um, but I wish other camera manufacturers would do as well. AF point activation area, just leave that as standard. LCD, just leave it on zero with shutter button only. Lens F, just leave that. Adderage, doesn't matter. Focusing screen, leave that on standard unless you've changed it. And that's it for the custom section there. 
you can register camera settings if you want to onto the C uh, on the dial at the top, which gives you a custom setting. I don't bother with it. I just leave it as it is. I don't think it's necessary. You've got your sensor cleaning and then you've got your firmware version. Now, actually, I should check to see if there's a firmware update for that. And that is all of your settings. That's it done. It's a very simple camera. There isn't much to set. And when I use this, you could use aperture priority or or manual mode and that's about what I do. I pretty much just only shoot this in manual mode. I use it in a really, really simple way. I just adjust my ISO, my aperture and my shutter speed manually. Uh, most, it depends on the lens, whether you use the joystick on the back or not. Uh, you'll find with a lot of lenses that the out of focus points aren't particularly reliable. You need to do some experimentation and get used to them and see how they work with different lenses. Otherwise you'll be stuck with focus and recompose on the sensor center point in the focusing system. But that's really all I do with this camera. I just really use it in the most basic kind of way. And that's why I, I love it because once I've set this now in the menu system, imagine a camera system where you don't have to go into the menu system again. The only thing I will go into the menu for is the bracketing. That is it. And that's the only feature that I would use. The rest of it, I just leave alone and I don't touch it because there's no need to. And I, that's one of the things I really like with this camera is that I'm not diving into the menu system because there's nothing there. There's nothing really worth changing um, other than, as I said, the bracketing here. So it's a nice, simple camera to use. It will teach you photography well because it doesn't hold your hand. <laughs> it really will make you learn how to use manual mode properly. And uh, I think it will make you a better photographer in the sense of your actual core photography skills. It's not going to teach you lighting and, and composition, but it will teach you the basic camera skills well. And later on, when you get good at, at photography and you get better, you will find um, a kind of pleasure in the simplicity. If that makes sense. There's a, there's a definite pleasure to the simplicity of a camera and not having all these different modes to think about and all these different settings. It's not that they confuse you when you become more experienced, it's just that there's a, a real pleasure in the simplicity of the camera. And it feels like a more pure experience where you're just using something in the most simplistic kind of way. I think you'll know what I mean, maybe you don't at this stage, but maybe you will do one day later or perhaps you're ready for that now and that's why you're watching a video like this. And if you are, then I think you should do that. And another thing I think you should do is subscribe to this channel. Give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment as well. And I'll see you again in the next video. Take care.